Hi, Dr. Teresa Lyons here, creator of Navigating Autism and Eat to Heal Autism. And this week's Ask Dr. Lyons question is... What vitamins are produced by our gut microbes? Here is a warning. This is for beginners or for those who haven't found solutions yet. Thinking about resolving health issues from a root cause perspective, that is where you get the long-term gains. Supplements and drugs can certainly help in the short term and totally should be used if needed. However, if you want that long-term change, if you want your child being healthy and happy and you don't have to worry about them in college and what are they eating and all those kinds of things, the long-term change that you seek comes from diet and addressing infections. Infections are really a root cause, so it certainly needs to be addressed. Work with your healthcare team. If you don't have a functional medicine doctor, get one because they will help you figure out what the root cause is. And real change is possible, totally possible. All right, B vitamins and health. It is well established in the scientific literature that B vitamin deficiencies impact health and disease. And if you have a child with autism and you've gone to a pretty decent doctor, more than likely they will start to talk to you about B vitamin deficiencies. They might talk to you about methyl B12 shots or folate or a whole variety of B vitamins. This is the reason why. There is also growing evidence in the scientific literature that B vitamins are key in the optimal functioning of our central nervous system. We want our children to have great health and the ability to learn and the ability to focus. That is basically impossible to do if there are issues with the central nervous system. And so this is how B vitamins is really important for overall health. So what are B vitamins involved in? B vitamins are enzymatic cofactors involved in metabolism of glucose, fatty acids, and amino acids, metabolism of tryptophan, homocysteine metabolism, synthesis and metabolism of various neurotransmitters and neurohormones. This is really important. So serotonin and GABA, dopamine and glutamate, adrenaline and histamine, acetylcholine and melatonin. I'm sure at least one of these items here hits home because a doctor either mentioned your child's levels are not correct or something in passing, something about sleep, right? Melatonin, histamine, they might be having all different kinds of reactions, more like allergic reaction type things. So you can see B vitamins are involved in all of this. This is why they're so important. This is why they're talking about a lot and this is also why they're studied so much so that was a lot for B vitamins to be doing and involved in our body right and you might be thinking my goodness that's a lot is that it no it is not here is a very important aspect of B vitamins some B vitamins are also involved in regulating intestinal permeability and the blood brain barrier these two aspects of our body protect our body. They give our immune system a chance to rest and B vitamins are involved in all this. Sometimes you might be wondering, how did my child get a leaky gut? How did this all start? And there's many answers to that, but B vitamins are really important to keep into perspective because if you start to have increased intestinal permeability, right? That means molecules that should remain in the gut are not remaining in the gut. They're going all throughout the body. That means the immune system is overacted and it has to clean up things that it really shouldn't. And the same thing is true for the blood brain barrier. If you want your child to focus and learn and be curious and ask all great questions, you want their blood brain barrier to be optimally functioning. You do not want any leakiness there at all. So this is why B vitamins are so important. This is why you've probably Google searched it and read about B vitamins and autism. It's because they're involved in so much of our bodies and we want our children to be happy and healthy, 
This is why B vitamins are important. B vitamins and gut microbes. The majority of our gut microbes, those little bugs that live in our guts, and also those in fermented foods, they're actually able to synthesize and metabolize B vitamins, such as all of these. <laughs> you can see B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B7, B9, B12, including K2 and A. I threw those in there just for completeness because um, vitamin A and vitamin K, super important, and those are fat soluble. It, it, it's our gut microbes produce so much that our body needs. And it's important to, to really take a moment to appreciate that. We know the majority of children with autism have gut dysbiosis. And this is how just having gut dysbiosis can really affect life. It can affect health. It can affect so much because if you're deficient in these vitamins, right? And then maybe you're a picky eater, so you're not getting the, the nutrients from food. And maybe you don't like really taking pills or supplements or your parents, you know, try and hide it and stuff like that. And it's kind of a battle. This is the reason why gut health is so important. And this is also the reason why for long term, this is where you want to put your focus, your energy, your effort is into rebuilding the gut. Here's a great figure from some literature. I have the reference down below if you'd like to see. And you can see here how there are, in step one, there's um, different dietary sources, right? That's great. And then in the figure with the two right here, these are talking about the roles of B vitamins. I won't go into the specifics of all this. You could just pause it and read this if you want. But you can see how much is so important for optimal health. These B vitamins are really important. And it's not just B12. It's more than just B12. And then you can see here the different factors, step three here, the different factors contributing to low B vitamin status. So there's dietary factors, right? You might be eating lots of food, but it's highly processed and there's not that much nutrients in highly processed foods. Or your child might be a picky eater. So dietary factors are one thing. Another thing is decreased absorption and GI synthesis. So this is another really root cause to get addressed. Because let's say you address diet, your child's eating more food, eating more healthy food, getting more nutrients. You also want them to absorb as much of those nutrients as possible. And then there's also abnormal metabolism. So these are all areas that really do play a large role in children with autism. The great thing is that they are easily addressed. A little more information about B vitamins are, okay, deficiencies. What does that look like? I won't go through every one, but here's for two of them. So vitamin B1, if you're deficient in vitamin B1, you have confusion and memory loss. Typically, depends exactly on how much of a deficiency it is. Same with uh, B3, so dementia, delirium, and psychosis. It is very hard and unrealistic to expect a child to be able to excel in school if there are deficiencies, let's say in B1, which affect memory loss. You can see how many of these B vitamins are really influencing cognition. And this is what we want our children to be able to do is to be able to excel in school. So when you have deficiencies, yes, it affects health, but it affects so much more. The ability to learn, the ability to enjoy learning. We want our children to be happy and healthy. So B vitamins are certainly an important aspect to that, but it's not just about supplementing. The simple takeaway from this research is that if your child is deficient in any B vitamins, supplementation certainly makes sense in the short term, without a doubt. But for the long-term change, right? We're, we're talking 20 years from now. We're talking like totally different child, totally different outcome. You're a different parent. How you get there is focusing on diet, working with a functional medicine doctor to address these different gut infections, as well as rebuilding the gut microbiota. It's not so simple as just taking a probiotic, 
rebuilding the gut microbiota is something that is very specific and it's very focused. It totally can be done. And this is the reason why you want that gut to be as dynamic and robust as possible so that the microbes are producing vitamins that your child needs so that they don't have to get everything from food. You want them to be eating healthy, yes, of course, but if the gut is contributing, then the pressure on your child to eat healthy every single meal, every single snack, right? That's that's a lot of pressure. When you have a well-functioning gut, that pressure is taken off. So simple takeaway, change is possible. You can get it in the short term with supplementation. You can get it in the long term by changing diet, working with a functional medicine doctor to address the gut infections and rebuilding the gut microbiota. And here's that reference in case you want to look a little more deeply into that article.